Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to do some yarn cake dyeing. I am currently winding a cake of Knit Picks Swish Decay, which is 100% Superwash Merino. I'm actually winding the cake a second time to make sure that it is nice and loose, so that way when we are doing our yarn dyeing technique, the dye can penetrate more fibers. The tighter your cake is wound, the more resist there will be from the fibers themselves. So ultimately, it is up to your personal preference and discretion how tightly or loosely you wind the cake. Today's video is sponsored by David. David, thank you so much. If you would like to learn how you as a viewer can sponsor an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, uh, get some yarn dyed in the video and shout outs in the process, uh, go and check out the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. You'll find the link in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. Today we are going to revisit injecting dye inside of the yarn cake. I want to do some minor differences to what we did the very first time I tried this. The biggest difference is that I want to use my big catering steam pan. Uh, I think that this will make it easier for that way you guys can see what is going on um, because I'm not as confined to the pot and yeah, we'll sort of see how things go. I also think that I am going to mix dyes and use a syringe to inject them because I can inject a greater volume at any one time. This won't necessarily be providing more pressure in here, but the colors might spread more if we have more volume. Now granted, every single yarn cake you do will be unique. There are tiny differences in the way that each cake is wound, the tightness, and all these other factors. So it won't be immediately obvious what differences we see are the result of the changes I make today, but whenever you're playing with cake dyeing, each sort of twist and change and alteration you make can help you decide what you want to do differently in the future. And so it's just a great way to learn and play with color. My catering steam pan is full size, four inches deep, and I have it across two burners here on the stove. Now the yarn cake is only a tiny bit shorter than the edge of the pan. So it's not gonna be able to be fully submerged. But if we keep it in the center of the pan and we make sure the whole thing is wet by squeezing it down at the beginning, I'm optimistic we can get some really fun results. In the pan, we have 24 cups of water. And I'm gonna start off with two tablespoons of white vinegar. This is a lot less vinegar than I might normally start with. Usually the proportion I like to use as a baseline is two tablespoons of vinegar per eight cups of water. Um, so there's enough acid that some colors might start striking, but it will also give them an opportunity to spread. Everything is still cool, and I'm now going to attempt to submerge the yarn cake. I suppose one other difference I should mention right now is that the yarn cake is technically different from the ones that we used the first time. This is DK weight um, and it's 100% superwash merino. Um, so that's just something else to keep in mind. Now I am pressing it down very firmly to allow it to soak up liquid. We want it to not necessarily just be floating, um, but actually, in doing this, it sort of spread out widthwise a little bit. And I'm not sure if you can tell, but there's not a ton that is above the surface. But I am confident that I can now sort of go in more at an angle, and you guys will have a better view of what I'm doing this time when we inject the dye into the cake. Now with the heat on medium, and again the burners are about here and here, um, I'm going to let this heat up. I know it's almost springtime, but I feel like playing with a fall inspired colorway using some Dharma Saffron Spice, uh, Dharma Fawn, Dharma Golden Yellow, and Jacquard Brown. All of these are currently in premixed 1% stock solutions, and I am going to dilute the dye by adding one tablespoon of the dye into a quarter cup of water. I'm not entirely sure if these syringes can take heat, so 
so we're just going to do a quick test. So you can see the stream of liquid and how it's much easier to get more liquid. This time we might end up forcing some of the dye through to the bottom, but we'll deal with that as things happen. Okay, I've got the golden yellow, and I guess we're going to go in right here, and I'm just injecting that color. The tip did not go very far into the cake. I was really just, you know, pushed the tip in and injected it. Um, and I'm just going to rinse it there at the edge. I don't see any color coming out the bottom, but and I'm going to reduce the heat. You can sort of see the cake move up a tiny bit. Let's do the brown next. Again, I'm pressing the tip down and injecting all of that liquid. And again, it seems to be staying put pretty much where I put it. This time, the colors are more dilute, and this is the saffron spice. This time you can see the spread a little bit more. Um, as I'm injecting, the dye is definitely moving out from where I have placed it. Um, and we've got, what is this, some fawn, which should be sort of like an orangey brown color. Okay, here I can see, I saw what looked like a few tendrils starting to escape, and maybe I see a little bit of orange in the pan over there, but mostly these colors are staying put from where we have placed them, which I think is really, really cool. Um, all right, I think what I want to do is come in with This is almost, there's like just a tad left, the rest of the golden yellow. And I'm going to put a tiny bit in the center. Uh-oh. And I'm putting a tiny bit there towards the outside. And there, some dye went out, but that's because I kind of hit it. And what I did in these instances was not as deep an injection. I went shallower. It's possible that it went down just as much, but I can't really say for sure. We definitely see some white around the outside, though. Okay, and I'm coming in. This is a little bit of that brown. Um, I'm sort of lightly adding it some of these sections because I think I want to make sure there's some continuity there should be some of that golden color and some of this more brown all the way through and then the more orange and fawn tones which I haven't used fawn in a while and I forgot how beautiful it is those will be more towards the outside um, yeah, I guess at this point it's less injecting and I'm more just adding to the top. The first one definitely was an injection, but now I am adding more to the surface. Sorry, this was the fun. It wasn't brown. This color that I have here is Aztec gold. I thought it was Jacquard brown, but the, the last color is actually Aztec gold and I accidentally did add some into the water and I'm going to inject a bit into there. Um, oh, but I was definitely, definitely wrong. Um, I was pulling it up and I was like, why is this looking so brown? Okay, and over here, I'm trying to wiggle the tip down a little bit this is the last of that fawn color. And as I squirt, I see some starting to spread. Okay, but 
I think that we have something cool here. We've used up, I would say, 90% of all of that dye that I mixed. The biggest spread, I think, was from that Aztec Gold. But I think that what we have going on here is really pretty. I also think that even without me moving the camera, like I could move you down, but you can kind of see how little color there is around that outside edge. That's not telling us what's going on beneath the surface but the dyes aren't shooting outside of the cake, which is really, really interesting to me. The heat is still on low, and I think I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. The soft yellow that's in the pan isn't really showing up, but it is significantly less pigmented than these colors we're seeing here on the surface of David's yarn. I honestly can't remember if I said, but let's wait 20 minutes, and then we will come back. Things, honestly, don't look that different. <laughs> There's still some yellow around the edge and what our cake looks very similar. I'm just gonna add a nice healthy splash of vinegar. And I don't think we're that hot, but I'm also going to just make sure we've got this vinegar moving around. We wanna make sure all these colors are set. <laughs> now let's leave this another 15 minutes. I probably should have added that vinegar earlier, but hopefully that'll help this bit of yellow on the outside sort of into the yarn. And yes, is a technical term. <laughs> Sorry guys, I am in a mood today. <laughs> I know you guys can't see that soft yellow, but it is there and doesn't seem to be budging anywhere. For curiosity's sake, Let's press down on the cake and let's try lifting it up. And neither, none of that seemed to do anything. But maybe moving the cake around could help with some of that residual yellow. I'm not even sure. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the heat and let this cool until I can comfortably remove it with my hands, at which point we'll flip it over and see what we can see. While we wait for things to cool, which I know will feel pretty instantaneous for you, but if you'd like to learn more about the pans, the yarn, or any of the other tools and equipment I'm using in this video, you can find a bunch of affiliate links in the video description. I also always welcome questions, and so if I accidentally left something out, feel free to leave a comment, um, and I will let you know exactly what I was using in the video. It is our moment of truth. Our dye bath is cool and ha! Huh, I see some yellow that went all the way through to the bottom, a hint of some brown, a hint of some orange, but otherwise stuff pretty much stayed towards the surface. I am gently going to squeeze out some of this water and honestly, this is fairly cool right now, so we can go ahead and gently rinse it out. One other thing I want to point out is that there is still some color, even though it was hard to see, left in our dye bath. And I am just going to rinse with some tap water right now, some cool tap water, taking care to not pop the center out of our cake. But oof, I am really excited to see what it'll look like. And this is just a nice, subtle rinse. I'm not seeing any color come out of the cake, which is good. We will do a more thorough wash, likely off camera, once I have unwound the cake. So that way, um, there's a chance for us to wash all the yarn that is towards the center. But what I'm gonna do now is put this through my automated spin dryer, um, so that way we can let the liquid drain, which will help the cake dry faster. I find it's a lot easier to, and honestly better for the yarn, to unravel these cakes once it is dry, or at least close to dry. And the spin dryer uh, makes that possible for me. I do get some questions about my spin dryer. It is a Laundry Alternative Nina Soft spin dryer that Laundry Alternative actually sent me for free. I don't link it in the comments anymore because this model is actually discontinued. Um, but just in case you're curious, this is the spin dryer that I'm using. I am so, so thrilled with how much easier it was to inject that color. When we were using the syringes, I could 
add more volume of the dye onto our yarn cake faster. And that made a huge difference. David, I hope you're enjoying this warm, earthy colorway that we have going here. I am actually kind of into the, the Aztec gold. I don't know why I thought that I had pulled brown at first, but I'm excited. If we peek in, we do see some white in the center, even though we have a lot of coverage on the top. And so that excites me. Of course, if we look at the bottom, we do see a lot of white, sort of a more buttery yellow, and some paler tans. I am really excited to see how this will look as we unravel it. And so that's what I'm gonna go do right now. I'm gonna wind the yarn onto this one foot PVC pipe nitty knotty. Um, the way it's wound will end up with a four foot skein. The nice thing about using the PVC pipe is you can go bigger or smaller, uh, and these are really cheap and easy to construct from just supplies at your home improvement store. I do have a video on how the pieces I used and how I constructed this nitty knotty. The final perk is you can store them flat or in pieces. I want to mention again that getting as much water out of the cake as you can before you sort of leave it to dry really, really helps with the yarn integrity and just keeping things from getting stretched out. Uh, if you don't have a spin dryer like I do, you can use a salad spinner or you can even take a towel and carefully roll it up in a towel and press out some of that water. All these things will help it dry faster. And I would say this cake is, if it's not completely dry, then it's like 95% dry. As we unravel, it's fun to see where the colors have been injected and how deep some of them go compared to others. And granted, there were some that we injected more towards the outside and others we injected more towards the middle. So maybe we'll see some shifts in the proportions of colors as we unravel this. As we get further in, it looks like we're gonna have more pigmentation towards the center. I'm not sure if that orange will go away, but even looking at the Nitty Nani so far, it's subtle. But I do think the pigmentation seems to be increasing as we get to the center. Even if the yarn is not a true gradient, because there's some representation of the colors all the way through, or an obvious gradient, there still might be elements that feel like a soft, subtle fade. And there's no doubt that there is asymmetry in this yarn. As we finish up with the bitty bitty center, almost all of the brown is gone and the orange will disappear, leaving a bit of butter yellow and white at that very end. How do I know that the orange will disappear? Well, the center popped out of the cake at one point, so that gave me a little sneak peek. Here is David's gradient, our asymmetric yarn. Again, I sort of hesitate to call it a gradient, just because when I think gradient, I think about smoother transitions of color, but there is a symmetry to here. You can see sections where the colors get a little more intense, get a little less intense, sections with more brown and more orange and then more yellow, and I think that this would look stunning knit up. Removing the yarn from the Nitty Knotty, you can get more of a sense of some of the color progression. But keep in mind, we do see some pooling of some of the orange here um, from the sections, and depending on your gauge when you knit or crochet, it might not pull up in that same way. But there is more of white and more pastels towards what was the outside of our cake, and then we see a lot more of the brighter yellow go towards that center. And uh, I think this is so, so, so fun. What's next for this stunning asymmetric yarn? Well, when I'm done filming this video, I am going to go wash it. I'm going to do my standard treatment with a little bit of soap, and then I will put the yarn, eh, I may or may not put it through the spin dryer again, but I'll hang it up to dry completely before I go and ship it to David. The reason why I'm going to wash the yarn again now is twofold. One, there is a tiny bit of a crimp in some of the strands, and so washing it will help that relax. The other reason is that when we wash the yarn immediately after dyeing it, since it was in the cake, you can't really get to the center, and this is just to remove any unbound dye if there is any. I'm not expecting any bleeding, but if there is, I will 
either put a note on the screen or I'll pop back in with some footage so that way you guys can see. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I am definitely not done injecting dye into urine cakes. I have a few other tweaks and things I want to play with and build on the way that this happens. But each time we do it, we learn a little bit more. If you love the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, well first, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. But you should also go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon if you're interested in supporting the channel on another level. I offer patrons early access to the Die Pop PS series, where PS both stands for Postscript and Patreon Special. Um, patrons also get an exclusive newsletter that can vote and help shape the direction of content on the channel. And there's some other cool perks like exclusive behind the scenes sneaks peeks, advanced notification of shop restocks, and more. You can find a link to the Patreon in the video description and in the top right hand corner of your screen. David, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Die Pot Weekly. I am so thankful and excited by this yarn, especially because this isn't a color family or type of colorway that I frequently play with. And I do want to explore more warm brown mixtures this year. And viewers, lab mates, Chemnitz community, feel free to comment below with different color combinations you would like to see me use in the future. I have solicited selections, um, both in the Patreon comments and on Instagram recently, and I'm creating a little collection of colors I want to play with. I have also been playing around with some swatching using colored pencils to create some color mixtures that I like and that otherwise I might not go straight to. So. I am trying to go outside of my color comfort zone even more this year. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.